Hello everyone, so today we're going to talk about the WAN 2.2 anime model new update. There's a new version 2 update for this model, and it has better motion and is able to detect facial expressions more accurately for the character. As you can see here we've got the reference video, the DJ is mixing music, but I'm using this piano playing character as my reference image. So, I'm basically swapping that piano player into the DJ role in this video. By doing that, we're able to transfer those detailed facial expressions into one 2.2 animate and get the character to mimic them really well. The coloration in one 2.2 animate also looks more solid now, especially when you're doing mass edits, particularly mass edits with source video backgrounds. In the past, you'd sometimes get slightly blurry or pixelated results on your character, but with version 2 of this model running in the WAN videos wrapper, the overall performance is noticeably better. You can grab this model from the same Hugging Face repo. In WAN videos Comfy FP8 repo, there's a folder called WAN 2.2 Animate. Previously, we were using the FP8 scale model, but now we have the V2 model, and the file size is even smaller than before. It's fully compatible with the WAN video wrapper. I haven't tested it in the native node yet, but technically it should work in native comfy UI nodes too. Also, the pre-processing is way easier now compared to previous versions. In the example, workflows for the WAN videos wrapper, segmentation is much simpler. You don't have to manually input object coordinates using a point editor anymore. Now, it's better. We're using Beatbox, which almost auto-detects where the character is. It draws a bounding box around the character, and then starts detecting facial expressions and body pose using VIT pose. These two nodes, draw VIT pose and the pose face detection, are combined with the Oxy Detections model loader, which comes from another WAN Animate pre-processing custom node for Comfy UI. You can download that from another repo, and it's also searchable in the Comfy UI manager. The same author who made the WAN videos wrapper created this pre-processor as a separate tool so you can actually use these WAN Animate pre-processing custom nodes alongside the native node for WAN 2.2 anime if you want. But anyway, today, we're just going through the original example workflow to see how it works. Performance-wise, it's definitely improved compared to the previous version. All the links you need are included right in the workflow, so you can check those out. You'll need the body and face detection YOLO models. You can download those from the Hugging Face repo called VitPose Comfy. Just go to the Files and Versions tab, and in the subfolder there, you'll find the Pose Detection model and the Face Detection model. You'll also need the YOLO 10 AMP Oxy model files. Click the link in the workflow, and it'll take you straight to the official WAN 2.2 Animate Hugging Face repo, where you can download those YOLO Oxy files. Once you've downloaded everything, Put the models in your Comfy UI Models folder. Create a subfolder called Detections and store both the VIT pose models and the YOLO models for face and pose detection in there. Once you've got those set up and you've also downloaded the V2 model for the FP8 WAN 2.2 animate, you're ready to start playing around with it. Now, I've got this DJ reference video as an example and I've set it to 500 frames just to get a longer output. By the way, as it already explains in the workflow, if your total number of frames is larger than the frame window size, it'll automatically trigger long length video generation. Another option is to use the WAN Video's Context Options node. You'd connect that and input two parameters, the total number of frames and the frame window size, just set them to the same number. Then connect that Context Options node into the WAN Video Sampler. This method runs more stably, but honestly, the quality isn't as good as running it the default way, using the frame window size directly in one video animate. So I usually stick with the default frame window size because I've tested it, and it just looks better than using the context options node. And as you can see here, it's definitely better than what we had in version 1 of one video animate with those FP8 model. I'm going to try it again with another character as the DJ operator, so we can see how it looks different. Let's say, for this reference image, I'm going to use this AI character. It should look different from the previous result. Now we'll generate a new one using this new reference image and swap that character into the source video. As you can see, we don't need the point editor anymore. 
we don't have to click run first to get the initial frame and manually place dots on key points before continuing with pose generation. Now it auto detects everything, which makes it way more convenient for the user. Once I set the frame count, resolution, audio files and all that, it just auto generates everything for me. And as soon as it starts, you can see it's using the YOLO models for segmentation, detecting the character's face and body pose. The pose and face detection are super accurate, and the segmentation auto-generates smoothly throughout the whole pre-processing stage. So we've got the generated result here, let's check it out, and the reference image, especially this reference image right here. It's doing way better than the previous WAN 2.2 animate model, and here's the full video preview of this, you can see it for yourself. It's pretty cool how the character is able to replicate the hairstyle and the t-shirt accurately. There are even details on the jacket. Everything comes through really nicely. One thing I really like is that even though the character didn't have headphones on like in the reference video, it didn't get influenced by those kinds of objects from the reference video's outfit. The older versions of this model actually had those kinds of issues. But there's something we should take a closer look at. Whenever we try different camera shots, like this kind of switching camera angle here, one 2.2 animate is able to recognize the character from different angles or different camera shots, and it still creates a very coherent style for the character throughout, even across those different shots. Other models just can't handle those kinds of video effects when you're watching them. Now there's one spot that still needs a little enhancement. Around the seven second mark during this transition, you'll notice a bit of a dark shadow on the person as they step back like this. That's because of the masking region. If you check the pre-processing preview, you'll see that sometimes WAN 2.2 animate can't perfectly handle every part of the mask. And if you're using a low sampling step count, like four steps here, which is the basic entry point for WAN 2.2 anime, it can cause issues like this shadow or unclear areas in the masked region. So what I did was run this video through another workflow I built just last weekend a V2V enhancer. What it does is pretty straightforward. It's basically a text-to-video model. We input the video into the VAE encoder. This method was actually already used in the WAN video wrapper before in the first example workflow, but I wanted to apply the same concept using the native node instead. And I wanted to show this because it's not just for WAN 2.2 animate. You can use it for other AI-generated videos too. Think of it like a second pass of video sampling, it really helps clean things up. Like in this example, you can see all the music equipment, all the buttons, the stage, even the lighting becomes much clearer than in the first pass. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison, before and after. Especially in full size, you'll notice the wall. After that second sampling pass, we actually get more detailed texture on it. And the character's face? You can really see it now. Overall, the facial recognition and character identity pop out way more compared to just using four-step sampling. Even the fingers and hands are clearer. You can actually see the knuckles on top here. Those shapes come through much better. And that masking issue we talked about? It's fixed here too. Look at that same seven-second transition. After the second pass, that shadow in the masked region is completely gone. You'll also notice a huge improvement in the hands, no more weird pick-like hands like before, and especially the character's face. This is honestly why I really like doing a second pass with this video enhancer workflow after generating the initial video. It gives you a much clearer character identity, plus more detail on accessories, like earrings, hair, all of it gets sharper and more defined. So how does this workflow actually work? Well, I'm using several LoRa's for enhancement. First, I'm using the WAN 2.2 low noise model. That one's great for adding fine details to the video frames, so it's really useful to include in the workflow. It just fits perfectly into what the AI model is trying to do. I'm also using the LightX 2V LoRa, specifically the latest version, WAN 2.2250928. I apply the low noise model to these connections too. Additionally, I've added the realism boost from the WAN 2.1 LoRa model. This one's from the Fusion X Hugging Face repo. You can check it out if you want, but it's not required. 
You can totally swap it out for your own Loras, like a custom character Laura if you have one. The last Laura I'm connecting is the reward model Laura, which I've talked about before in relation to HPS and MPS. You can look that up and download it if you'd like. And in this group, I'm connecting the low noise model to the sampling steps as well. Speaking of sampling steps, this setup is actually pretty simple. You basically just need a case sampler. Think of it like an image to image method. You pass in the VAE encoded image frames, or more simply, your input image. Use the correct VAE for the model, add some latent noise, and feed that into the K sampler. All you really need to configure is the denoise value. Sometimes, if your first AI generated video looks low quality, blurry, or with weird shadows, you'll want to set denoise higher, like around 0.5. But if you're happy with how the video already looks and just want to refine it a bit, you can go lower. In this case, I set it to 0.2 because my first WAN 2.2 animate output looked pretty solid, no character deformations or morphing, so I just wanted to fix the shadows and add a bit more facial detail to reinforce the character's identity. A denoise of 0.2 was totally enough. I've also connected the context window node here, just in case I want to generate a longer video, but keep it realistic. Don't expect to generate super long videos unless your computer can actually handle it. Some people have illusions about what their old GPU can do. They think it'll perform like an H100, but that's just not how it works. Otherwise, the setup is pretty standard, similar to typical text-to-video workflows. The main difference is that instead of generating from scratch, we're loading an existing video, passing it through VAE encoding, and using text prompts. You can write your own prompts, or, like I've done here, I've set up a little group that uses video captioning with mini CPMV. We talked about this video captioning trick in a previous video. It's super useful. The AI analyzes your input video and auto generates a caption. If you want to use that, just connect the caption strength output to the positive prompt node and it'll override your manual text input. That way, the vision language model, mini CPMV, writes the prompt for you. After that, it's basically the same settings as any video to video workflow. But be realistic. How long your video can be really depends on your hardware. For me, 500 or 600 frames is usually no problem. Also, the latest Light X2V LoRa models handle 720p resolution really well, so I've set the width and height here to 720p by default. Whether your source video is portrait or landscape, you can just swap the width and height values accordingly. I've found that if you stick to 480p, sure, it'll work but you won't see a real quality improvement in the final output. So there's not much point in keeping the resolution low when you're already using WAN 2.2 for video generation. If you use the same resolution in both passes, that's fine. But why not take advantage of the same concept we used back in the old days with high res fix in automatic one or stable diffusion. You'd upscale and refine to get better image quality. Same idea applies here. This workflow is super modular. You could technically remove the load video path and plug this image resizing and refinement section into your other workflows. Just keep in mind, it'll make your workflow heavier because you're loading extra models and doing a second pass. So I'd recommend keeping this as a dedicated video enhancer workflow. That way, you'll get better faces, better overall video quality, and even improved details in the background, like the walls, the music equipment, the DJ panel, Everything gets sharper and more textured, as you can see in this example. All right, that's it for this quick update on the WAN 2.2 Animate V2 model from KJ Node, the WAN video wrapper, and this video enhancer trick using a basic text to video V2V method to make your AI generated videos look even better. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.